Hello, welcome to an exciting part of my series on creating an app in Python. Here I'm going to be showing you how to download the project uh, Kivi iOS, which will let you uh, get your app onto your smartphone and eventually also publish to the Apple App Store. So, like I said, the project we'll be using is called Kivi iOS. So I'm going to go ahead and search for that in Google. And I'll grab this first one, create a package for iOS. This is from the Kibi documentation. Um, now, you're gonna have to go through these steps for sure. So you definitely need to do this one in a command line. So if I open up um, a terminal window, window here, here I am. I've already done this before, so I won't do it. You do brew, install, auto conf, auto make, libtool, pkg dash, config. Okay, so you run that command, and these take a while, uh, but really, I don't think people really have issues with that. So do that command, okay, then go to the second one, brew, link, libtool, and press enter, and it should go ahead and do it for you. And then this command just installs pip, but I mean, most people have pip installed already. You can tell if you have pip installed by doing a which pip in on a Mac terminal. Or I guess you could probably do pip dash dash version too. Yeah, okay, so if it, if it returns something here, not some kind of error, it means you have pip installed, so you should be fine. Probably don't need to run this one. And then install Cython. Uh, you might have to do that. It probably wouldn't hurt, so go ahead and sudo pip install Cython double equal sign 0 0.26.1, okay? So that might take you half an hour or something to run all those commands. So when you're done with that, you know, pause the video right now, run those commands. When you're done with that, resume the video and we'll assume that you've done that part, okay? So now that you've got these working, no errors. Um, if you did get errors, look, just search, search for Google because someone's got an answer for, for how to fix it, okay? Um, now we need to actually clone the Kivi iOS project, okay, from GitHub. So in my terminal window here, I'm going to go to somewhere where I want to have this project and put it somewhere like actually decent because this is where you'll uh, be sort of compiling your app, okay. So I'll go to my friendly fitness app uh, directory. Okay, so here I have, uh, it's actually all my code. Let me go to my YouTube directory. Do it somewhere a little bit cleaner, okay? All right, so I'm in my directory for YouTube, okay, where I make my videos. So now I'll do git clone git, okay? I'm just copying this one here, this line. You don't need that dollar sign, okay? github.com slash kivi slash kivi dash iOS. And I've done this before, but I'll do it again so that I have a very uh, a totally clean uh, distribution of Kiwi iOS. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video here and I'll come back once mine's finished. This may take just a couple minutes here. Actually, this one's not too long. Okay, so I'll run it. Oh, actually, I have to do this as sudo, so you probably need to use sudo as well. So you need some uh, admin privileges when you're doing this. So throw sudo in front of it give it your password, and it'll run for a couple minutes, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, now that that's finished, uh, we're gonna need to do another command. So following this guy here, I will, well first I'll show you, we made a, oops, we made a folder called Kibi iOS when we cloned this GitHub repository, okay? So we'll cd into that folder, cd dash iOS, and now in here, we've got um, a couple things. This toolchain.py, that's what we're gonna be using to actually make um, our Xcode project, okay? Xcode we have to use because that's how you uh, create an iOS application and Kibi using this toolchain will convert our Python code into something that Xcode recognizes, okay? It'll compile it uh, using the Apple Clang compiler or something like that. Okay. So we need to now do this command, the toolchain uh, build command. So build lets us 
add modules to our Python application that we need to run. So I'm going to move over to the GitHub page for Kiwi iOS because they have another set of instructions there. And unfortunately, these two are very similar, these two sets of instructions. Uh, if you can go down here to the README here. Um, similar, so remember these are the commands you guys just ran. Um, here it says Python, Cython.28. It shouldn't really matter too much which one you have. Um, here, so here's the build command. This one is what you want to be doing pretty much, rather than what it says here, just build Kibi. You definitely want to build a Python version. And then this is open SSL, so this will let us uh, do secure HTTPS requests, okay? So anytime you're trying to uh, get or post data or something to a secure URL, one that starts with HTTPS, you need to have this open SSL uh, library. So these are the three things that I need to build for my application. And it's probably gonna be for most applications, this is all you need. Other ones that you can build are up here listed. So they're called recipes, all right? So maybe you need um, num, NumPy or something. So you would build it using this build command. All right, so I'm using Python 2. I've had a couple issues with Python 3, so I recommend using Python 2. All right, so I will say sudo dot slash toolchain dot py um, build Python 2. Okay, I'm following this command. Build Python 2 and open SSL and Kibi. And now this is one that really will take a while, so I'll come back probably in half an hour or something uh, and show you the next steps after this one. Okay, so enter, give it your password, and let it run for a while. Go get a snack or something. Okay, so my command is finished. It took, I don't know, half an hour. Um, so now let me, the next step is to create my Xcode project for my app. Okay, so if I scroll down here on the instruction page, um, you'll see this, create Xcode project. All right, so we're gonna be using the tool chain again, and we use the create functionality and then we give it the title of our app. So in the example is Touch, Tra Touch Tracer. In my example, I'll call it Friendly Fitness. It doesn't really matter. And then you tell it where your code is, okay, for your, for your project in Python. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll say sudo dot slash toolchain dot pi create, call mine Friendly Fitness. And then um, my code is on my desktop and then I have a folder called friendly fitness dash app. Okay, so you go ahead and hit enter. And it just takes a second and boom. Okay, I've created my Xcode project. Um, now I'm gonna open this in Finder because my computer I have to mess around with the permissions of like any files I create. So um, I'm gonna right click here and I'll make all of the files inside of the folder that I just created, this friendly fitness iOS folder um, that was just created with, the, with that create command. I will unlock this so I can make changes here. And I'll say I'll let anybody read and write this. Okay. And then I click on this icon and apply to enclosed items. Okay. And um, I'll go up one folder. And let's see, Kibi iOS. Okay, this is the folder we downloaded from the GitHub repository. And I'll do the same thing here. Okay, this, you probably won't have to do this. I'm not sure you might. This is just something that has caused issues for me in the past. Okay. All right. So now let's go into that folder that was created, the friendly fitness folder. Dash, dash iOS, all right? So there's a couple things in here. Really the only one you're concerned about is this one, the Xcode project. So you can either double, double click this to open it with Xcode, or I can just say open, um, and then I give it the path to the Xcode project, okay? You should have Xcode installed by default on your Mac, I believe. If you don't, 
you just need to go to the uh, iTunes store on your Mac or the app, the app, the app store, whatever it's called, and install Xcode. Uh, my Xcode is the newest version, so as of, what is it, February 2019, it's 10.1. Okay, so if you're running into any issues that I haven't solved here and you, I don't know, maybe maybe if you can't find any answers to them online, try updating your Xcode if you're using an older one. Okay, so here I am in my project folder. The first thing you have to do is go over here and click on whatever you've called your app. All right. Um, and you can just, oh, let's see, this should be, I have my phone plugged into my computer, so it's, it's charging just with a little USB uh, cable. Um, but I want to run just on a simulator on my computer first. So I'll click like this one here and I'll hit go. Okay, first thing, it failed. Now it failed for me. You click on this little red uh, icon and then you double click over here. Excuse me. And it will tell you why it failed, okay? This is a command I run into, again, because of like the read write permissions. Um, I'm, I haven't seen anybody else with this issue. Maybe you'll have it too. Uh, hopefully you don't. But if you do, basically it's telling you that I can't set uh, times on some of these files, okay? It says the operation is not permitted. So to fix this, I go over here. Okay, I'll click on this icon. Then back to my uh, project. And I'll go over to build phases. And in this first uh, run script, I'll click the arrow. And I'll add a couple parameters in here. I'll do dash O as an orange. And then dash dash no dash perms. Okay. So now when I run, it won't try to like modify the times of these files, which it wasn't allowing. Okay. It's really not a big deal that I'm taking that out of there. Okay. So I click that button again, the play button, and it's building my app. And it said build succeeded right there. If you caught that, that's a great sign. Um, just so you know, the Xcode project here is automatically synced to your Python code anytime like you change something, if you add a new feature or you're working on it. The next time you press the play button here, it'll sync with that directory uh, that, you, that you used when you were creating the Xcode project. So this is pretty much automatically updating. It's really nice. Okay, so my simulator has popped up. Give it a second to think. All right, um, down here, well, you can see first of all in the simulator, it, something didn't work, okay? So down here is where is pretty much your command prompt. It tells you all the errors, it's just like Python. Okay, so I got an error, no module name requ requests. So this happens because the Kibi doesn't automatically know you're using the request library. So what you have to do is back here, um, to install a, or to add on a, com a pure Python package like requests is, uh, you can do sudo dot slash toolchain dot py and then you use the pip functionality. And you do pip install and then the name of your package. So I need requests, so I'll just do that. Give it my password. And it should successfully do it. Okay, so remember, if you are if you need a completely pure Python package, you just do pip install and then the name of the package. If you're doing one of the special recipes, for, like from earlier, like when I built Python 2 or Kivi or OpenSSL, you have to use uh, toolchain build and then the name of the package. All right, so now I've got Request installed, so I'll read. I'll retry here. Hopefully, it's a little bit quicker. There we go. All right. So it spit it. It spit out a bunch of stuff, um, but it has worked. Okay, you can see my app is on my simulator. Um, I've logged in. 
and it's really choppy. So I think I, I think I mentioned earlier, maybe it was, maybe I was just dreaming it. Um, it's really choppy on these simulators. Okay, don't don't be afraid. When you actually run it on your phone, it's as smooth as it is on your computer. Um, also notice that the icons look really good uh, on the phone on the simulator. So that's nice. When I was running it from uh, my computer, they were a little bit pixelated, but here they look perfect. Okay, so wonderful. I have all of my features here on my phone. Things are working. Um, let's see. I suppose now is a good time to show you how to get it on your personal phone. So over here in general, to get it on your personal phone, you have to create an Apple developer ID, okay? And unfortunately, this is horrible, but Apple makes you pay $100 a year to have one of these developer IDs. So I have one for myself because I do lots of hobbies and things. Um, also, I'm trying to maybe do some little freelancing work, creating app development. So I've, I've made one for myself. Um, you just have to go to Apple and purchase one so that you can build on your phone or distribute to the App Store. Now for Android, which I might show in a later video, to publish to the Google Play Store, you don't need, um, you don't have to pay, or maybe you pay a one-time fee for like 50 bucks or something. So it's not a yearly thing. So Apple really gets you on it. Google, not quite as much. Okay, but anyway, I'm assuming you have a developer ID here. If you don't, uh, you would go over to the internet and say Apple uh, by developer account. All right, so Apple developer. <clears throat> Here's what you would use. Pricing, annual fee is 99 US dollars. Okay, so that's I had to pay that out of my own pocket. It kind of sucks. Um, but you, you purchase this and then um, you should be able to use your Apple ID now uh, in here. All right. So maybe I'll make a more in-depth in-depth video if if that's necessary. Let me know if you need that. Okay. Okay. So now since I have my phone plugged into my computer using just a USB stick like it's charging or something, I can change the the device that I'm building my application on. So before I was simulating it on an iPhone XR. Now I'll click on my iPhone. All right, and I'll hit run here. And it's building, it's building. Okay, doing all that good stuff. And I might switch over to my phone now. So I unlocked it. Okay. And I'll probably cut out the video of my computer and switch to a screen recording on my phone. Okay, here's my phone. I'll click the app. And it takes a little bit to load up because I have those requests in there to get the data from my friends list at the start. All right, and I'm in. My app is on my phone. I'll go to the Add Workout page, and uh, here I am trying to add a workout. So you, it doesn't automatically add it to the workouts list. So you. What I'll do is I'll restart the app after I uh, put in all my input here. And that way you'll see when I add the workout, I head back, I have no workouts there. Okay. Now if I load the app back up, that workout was sent to my Firebase database. And when I load it up, I should see it in here. And there you have it. The app works on the phone. So hopefully this has helped you guys out. Um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Looks great. Thanks for watching, guys.